Okay, um, so we are going to go through um, how we determine um, whether the function that is given is continuous at a given point or not. So um, I say by a given point, uh, that's in general because sometimes it's at the origin, sometimes it's at any other point that you're given because there are a lot of coordinates that we can pick on the um, <coughs> from the x and the y coordinates to give us the output which is simply the z okay so um, one thing that we have to understand about um, uh, continuity of a function is that um, or well, just to remind ourselves because I believe we have talked about uh, continu continuity of a function at a certain point is that um, uh, you know you need to remember that a function okay a function is, is only continuous on its domain okay the function is only continuous on what? On its domain. That's one thing that we have to understand as well. Okay, so you can't have a function that is continuous at a point, uh, at a set of points that is not part of the domain. Okay, if you say it is, then perhaps there would be some errors as you were doing the the evaluation or something. But you can't have a function being continuous at a, at a, a, some coordinates, some set of points that is not part of the domain. That's why, like. Uh, like let's say you you find that the function is continuous from um let's say let me just say maybe negative infinity to let me say negative one okay not including negative one then negative one to positive infinity okay something like that so it basically means at negative one the function is not continuous then you happen to draw it like even when you have, you know you are supposed to have an asymptote there you draw the function maybe like maybe something like that this doesn't really make sense because you have said at negative one the function uh, the, y y like the function is like uh, negative one is not part of the domain and if you include it in the graph it doesn't really make sense we have to show you to say okay uh, this part that we have found to say <coughs> it's, um, it's not part, supposed to be part of the domain then at that point the function is not continuous so um, one tool that is also used when talking about continuity of a function is that um, for you to determine whether or not a given function is continuous, you have to determine um, where the limit, um, okay, the limit as f as x and y approaches um, zero comma zero. By the way, this is continuity of, of multivariable functions of the function f of x. Um, we have to compare it to. Uh, we have to compare it to what? Um, f at point a comma b so what do i mean uh, let me put, just put equals here so what it means is that um let me use a over b as well a comma b as well here okay so we have to determine the limit of a function okay at a comma b all right so we also have to evaluate it at what at a comma b if these two are equals to each other that means the function that you have is what the function that you have is continuous. So there are questions whereby they have already given you the answer to say after they evaluate, they tell you to say, okay, uh, after evaluating the value that you get is such and such. Then after you determine the limit, you have to compare that value. If that value that you have is the value for the limit, okay, if it is equals to the value after evaluating, then um, the function that you have is continuous. So we'll look at some few examples to try to make sense out of what we are saying right there. Okay, so let's say we are given, uh, let's say f of x, okay, we're given in piecewise form. So let's say we have a uh, 3x squared y uh, divided by uh, x squared plus y squared, then we're given 0 here. I say if x comma y it's not equal to 0 comma 0 there then if uh, x comma y is equals to what is equals to 0 comma 0 so now what it basically means is that after evaluating the function our f of x y which in this case is simply a z because we know to say our f of x y is simply indicated as z we want to know what our z is as we change values in the x and in the y all right Okay, so after we evaluate that 0, 0, what do we get? We get that is what? 
we get that is zero it's like the evaluation is already done for us so what we need to do is that we just have to determine the limit and we see if the, the, if the answer that we get is same as what they got when they evaluated as 0 comma 0 okay so um, I will say okay the limit as uh, x comma y approaches 0 comma 0 of the function that I have which is 3x squared y over x squared plus y squared so when it comes to evalu uh, when it comes to determining the limit of a function um, of course there you can determine the limit by approaching the function like in different directions in the x-axis in the y-axis or using the equation y is equals to x squared the parabola or y is equals to like a straight line y is equals to x something like that okay but uh, the method that I really like to use myself is uh, like replacing using polar equations it's very straightforward it, I, like when I think of trying to test the values like in the x in the y it takes a lot of time okay so when I use polar um, it's much convenient for me okay it saves a lot of time so I just have to remember to say my x is equals to r cos theta we did this under polar so y is equals to r sine theta then what else we know is that our x squared plus our y squared is equals to what is equals to r squared so it's just a matter of replacing now I mean substituting so you have the limit as x comma y okay um, approaches 0 comma 0 like that so uh, I'm going to substitute for that part okay so it to be like a 3 where there is x squared I'm going to put um, r squared cos squared theta multiplied by r sine theta for the y divided by r squared for the denominator so what it is here is that um, I have like the limit as x comma y approaches 0 comma 0 so what I have is that I'm going to have I think I can cancel that part in that part so I'm going to have like 3 r uh, cos squared theta uh, sine theta which is simply equals to 0 what do I mean by it being 0 so uh, this part here where I, I have my x comma y okay this part that I have my x comma y okay this part here is simply rep representing what representing r so it's more like where, where I have this I say uh, instead of me using that I substitute with what I substitute with r so it's like r as r approaches what as r approaches 0 even here as r approaches what approaches 0 okay so what it means is that uh, we are trying to evaluate now as r approaches 0 when we have r here when we substitute you're going to get what is 0 which is equals to um, which is simply equals to that value that we have there hence the function is what the function is continuous at the origin so when you when you when you determine continuity of a function the fact that it's continuous at the point that you are given uh, it doesn't mean it's, continu every, it's continuous everywhere else so that's why like when you make your conclusion you don't just say the function is continuous you say the function is continuous at given points for example I can say uh, therefore um, f of x y is what I'll say it's continuous at uh, a comma B meaning here I'm just generalizing because a, a comma B can be anything so when you say it's continuous B make sure to say that uh, like specify at which point is it continuous because it might be not continuous at this at, an, at another point but the point that you're given okay so what it is that we use the same application when it comes to different functions sometimes they don't evaluate the function for us sometimes you can be given just something general it can be trick functions or anything you just have to do the evaluation yourself and once again for me it's much convenient to work with um, it's much convenient for me to work with um, polar coordinates I mean polar equations uh, when it comes to evaluating uh, evaluating functions of this kind or maybe determining the limits okay so because when you are determining the limit you're just trying to determine what the like what the outcome is as the values are going uh, as the values of x and y are approaching those particular points that you that are given but when you're evaluating so you're looking for you're looking for the specific value that's kind of like the small difference between the small difference between um, evaluating as well as uh, determining the limit okay so um, I believe this, I believe this is enough for us to be able to answer um, 
different questions when it comes to determining whether the, the function is continuous or not continuous at a given point. So that's all in this video. Thank you very much for watching.